I played 100 days of Stardew Valley and tried to obtain the Golden Clock. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. In this video, we have 100 days to obtain 10 million gold and purchase the Golden Clock from the Wizard. This challenge is going to take everything I have, including all of the tips and tricks I have learned in the past year of playing this game. So let's jump into this super intensive challenge and let's have some fun. Day number one, probably the most important day in the whole challenge. It was all about getting set up as quickly as possible. So I planted the parsnips, watered them, and ran around the whole map to get as many forgeables as possible, as we were going to utilize the tea sapling strategy in this challenge. I also spent all my money on parsnip seeds in order to try to boost my farming level as quickly as possible. I also found lots of spring onions as well, which was really lucky. Not only could I sell these for lots of money, but it was good forgeable XP. Day number two, I started by cutting down some trees just to make some chests, but I also needed tons of wood for this challenge. I got the fish run off willy and I just spent the rest of the day pulling up some fish. The lake area is a great place to get fish if you want good fishing XP and money. I then made some spring wild seeds using the forgeables that I had collected, managed to make 20. Day three was of course the rainy day, spent all day fishing again. The more catfish I got the better, catfish sell for really nice money. I bought the fiberglass rod off willy and some trout soup to increase the odds of myself successfully catching catfish because the catfish can be quite troublesome sometimes. I also got some really nice stuff in the treasure chests such as coal and also some other bits and bobs of minerals. Level 5 fishing at the end of today I went with the fisher fish were 25% more that was a no-brainer. I got super lucky on day 4 the Neptune's glaive with a diamond couldn't ask for better luck than that. This time going into the mines will be a breeze as this weapon will make very short work of starter enemies. Day 5 I get the first batch of parsnips and there's a lot of parsnips here from the initial free parsnips and the ones I purchased off Pierre. So I'm going to harvest all these. Combine these with the money I currently have from fishing I'll be able to get some nice upgrades. So off into Pierre I can get the backpack upgrade that was badly needed. And I spent the rest of my money on potatoes, 192 potatoes right there. Why did I buy so much? Because this is a 10 million challenge. The best way to make loads of money in this game is to make as much money as you can in spring. It took me the whole day to plant the potatoes and water them up, but it is going to be worth it. Not only would I get tons of profits from the potatoes, but I'm also going to get lots of farming XP. So day 6 went to the community centre completed the spring bundle and I got some free spring seeds 30 of them in total which was really nice I planted those straight away went into the mines here and I got an ambushed floor but I had the Neptune's glaive these slimes stood no chance against me easy combat XP right here sometimes the green slimes can drop some real nice stuff as well I made it down to floor 10 got the leather boots first armor upgrade pretty nice if I see little copper clusters like this, to preserve energy I'll try to make a cherry bomb. You do need copper ore to make a cherry bomb, but just a few pieces. And normally it's worth it when it comes to clusters. So I got down into the dark levels, made my way through those, down into floor 40, got the slingshot. Turn that away because I don't use it. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day fishing. Day number 9, it was a rainy day, thank god, didn't have to water the potatoes. I did however get my first batch of spring forgeables picked all those up and I'm going to process those now into more spring wild seeds. Went to Clint as well, upgraded the pickaxe to a copper pickaxe. It just means getting down to the middle and ladder floors in the mines will be much easier. Did some fishing today, got some shads. Looking for catfish though, the more catfish the better. Day 10 we start, like we start most days, watering the crops, watering the forageables. This takes up several hours of the day, but it will be worth it in the end when we can sell all these beautiful crops. I also went to the lake and I did some more fishing because I needed more money, especially for the strawberries that were coming up in a few days. Day 11 I could finally harvest the potatoes. Look at the amount of XP I'm going to get from this. I got up to level 5 farming from getting all these potatoes, which is great. Went to Clint as well, got my copper pickaxe back off Clint. And this time I'm going to give him the axe to upgrade to a copper axe because this challenge is primarily going to come down to wood and fibre. Back down to the mines. And I got some copper ores here on the middle section, which is rare. It's really nice when you get that. Copper is needed for almost everything in the game. <laughs> Tappers, for example, kegs. Got the crystal dagger, turn that away. 
day 12, Demetrius pays me a visit. Go with the mushrooms, of course, because the mushrooms spawn every day. So it's just more money in my pocket. Do some fishing here. The bullheads and the largemouth basses sell for quite the money. Day 13, strawberry day. But before we get to strawberries, time to harvest all the lovely spring wild seeds. These, of course, will be turned into tea saplings later on. So once I've finished with those, I go to the Easter event here, and I spend all my money on strawberries. Look at the amount of strawberries I can get. 306 strawberries. We are going to make some serious profits by the end of this season. It's going to set us up nicely for summer. So I won the Easter event. Pick up the straw hat. This will be my first hat that I'm going to get in this challenge. The hats are pretty nice. But the primary reason I come here is for the strawberries. You know, the event is just an add-on. Back down into the mines, super lucky, got myself a diamond. I'll keep a few of those for triple shot expressos for salt cavern runs later on. I also made it down to the bottom floors, got the firewalker boots, which is pretty nice. So I was getting close to level 100. The obsidian edge is level 90, so we're getting there. I also went to Clint, got my copper axe today, which was great. I also gave Caroline a daffodil. Finally, after talking to her, I got her to two hearts, which means I could enter her sunroom and I could learn the overpowered tea sapling recipe. So upon entering the sunroom, Caroline will give you a couple of options you can select. You know, it doesn't matter which option you select, she will give you the recipe the next day for the tea sapling. To make a tea sapling, you just need some wood, some fiber, and you just need some wild seeds of any season. So pretty interesting scene here. When I'm alone with relaxing tea, my mind is empty and free to wander. Such a weird scene. I wonder if it means anything. Level 100 here. Got the old star drop, which was really nice. Anything that increases my maximum energy is welcome at this stage. Got level 5 mining. We're we'll going with the miner, plus 1 orb per vein. And we're going to go with the fighter, 10% extra attack power. Met 110 T saplings today from the fiber that I've generated so far. This was day 16. Sell those. That's 55 thousand gold in the bag went to morris of course because we're going to georgia route <laughs> got the the old georgia membership there it was raining today as well so you know normally as a rule of thumb if it's raining we get catfish because they sell for great money i had sixty thousand gold today primarily from tea saplings i got a mushroom floor today in the mines which is really lucky mostly red mushrooms but that was okay because it was the foraging xp that i was looking for anyway and i could just sell the red mushrooms for money but it's down to the bottom of the mines, floor 120, I got the skull key, which means I can now do skull cavern runs once I unlock the uh, the desert. Speaking of which, went back to Morris, paid 40 grand, got the bus unlocked, which means I can do skull cavern runs now. I also got Clint to process all these geodes. Sell most of the materials, of course, to make some extra money. The goal now was to save up enough to buy tons of star fruit, because they're just broken when it comes to making star fruit wine and selling the wine for tons of money. So we're going to get Clint to upgrade our pickaxe to a steel pickaxe. For me, that's the minimum requirement for Skull Cavern Run, because the steel pickaxe will just two-shot any of the nodes inside. So I got level 5 foraging. We're going to go with Gatherer at the moment, chance for double harvest. That is super profitable, especially if you're going for tea saplings. And it was another rainy day on day 19, so we spent the day fishing. The more catfish, the better. Level 9 fishing, we're really getting there with the fishing. Once we get level 10 fishing, we can go for the legend. 7,000 gold today from selling a fish. That wasn't bad, to be honest, for day of fishing. Got my steel pickaxe back off Clint on day 20 here. And I gave him another tool to upgrade straight away. I gave him the axe to upgrade to a steel axe. That way, I could get rid of all the wood on my farm to make for more space. I fixed the bridge as well so I could access to more forageables to increase my foraging XP even further. So, main reason for this, I wanted to push foraging level 7 as quickly as possible so I can make tree fertilizers. Because I can tell you right now from experience, trees run out very, very fast in Stardew Valley, especially if you're farming wood. Spent a good portion of the day clearing up everything on the farm, but primarily I wanted level 6 mining, which is why I started mining these rocks so I can make regular bombs. That comes in super handy in Skull Cavern, because all you need to make regular bombs is iron ore and coal. Day 21, the first batch of strawberries. Over 300 strawberries to harvest. This not only was going to level me up so I can make quality sprinklers, but it was going to make huge profits. Got the last backpack upgrade. 
definitely need that for Skull Cavern runs. So it's happy enough with that upgrade today. Day 21. Time to buy some stuff off the merchant. Got some staircases because it was Sunday and I had some jades. Also got a spicy eel. And I got a triple shot espresso. So that is the minimum requirements met for a good successful Skull Cavern run. Hopefully. So today I was aiming for floor 25 because if you get floor 25 for the first time, Mr. Key will send you 10,000 gold in the mail and that is a really nice amount of money to have going into the summer. Got lucky with the holes today, got down a good few levels and I'm at a past level 25 which is great. Now I know you can't see the levels here because the day is blocking out the screen but I don't get down too far today. I do get super lucky though and I get a prismatic shard off one of the iridium nodes there. So before the day ended I left and I converted the prismatic shard into a galaxy sword which will be the primary weapon of this challenge. It's not a bad weapon at all. 45 almost 46,000 gold today from selling strawberries. I made tons of quality sprinklers from the resources I got from the Scott Cavern. Also got my steel axe back off Clint I was super happy with that. No more upgrades for now. With the steel axe I can get rid of the large tree stumps and the regular tree stumps all around the farm. This actually gives pretty nice foraging XP too. 25 foraging XP per stump destroyed, plus hardwood, which is always a bonus. Day 23, I get my 10,000 gold from Mr. Key, and we spend a day running around getting forageables. Look at all this lovely iridium. I'm gonna sell all those bars eventually. I'm gonna get tons of money for those. It's time for another upgrade. We're gonna go with the gold axe, because wood just becomes so important. Back into Skull Cavern, of course, the more iridium I can get, the more money I can make. And I want to get tons of money together for the star fruit come summer. Level 7 foraging, that means 3 fertilizers. Level 7 combat. So I make a little tree farm here on my farm. And I'm going to put tappers on all those trees for oak resins for kegs later on. I also spend the rest of the day fishing. The more fish I get now, the better. I wanted to try to push level 10 fishing as quickly as possible. Today was day 25 and this is going to be the last strawberry harvest. Pick up all the strawberries and I make a path around my fertilized trees. This means getting the oak resins that are on will be super easy because no debris will spawn around the trees. So paths are super important, especially for the setup I was going for. Went back to Clint on day 25, got my gold axe and I spent the rest of the day fishing because I needed more money. Largemouth basses are pretty good, especially if you can get iridium largemouth basses. Level 10 fishing, of course, we'll go with angler. Fish worth more money. And we're back into the mines. So I was waiting for a rainy day for the go at the legend. I made more wild spring seeds. Gonna hold on to those, convert those into tea saplings. If I put it down on the ground now, they would be wasted because I wouldn't have enough time to grow before summer hits. I spent a huge portion of today cutting down trees because I needed wood to make tea saplings. Also had to go off the legend here. I failed it a few times, but I eventually win. So, I needed to upgrade my fishing gear. I needed the trap bobber. The regular fiberglass rod wasn't going to cut it. So, I purchased some trout soup, purchased some trap bobbers, and I also purchased the iridium rod so I could use the trap bobber tackle. Time for round two. The legend is a ferociously hard fish to catch. It's definitely one of the hardest fishes to catch in the game. But I did succeed eventually. Now, this was the third try. I didn't show the second attempt, uh, but it. So I decided to show the successful one <laughs> and I caught it eventually. That must have went on for about four minutes in real life to capture that. You know, I kept getting close, then it spun all over the place and my progress almost went back down to zero. But I will get almost 11,000 gold for that legend. The last day of spring, it was time to prepare for starfruit. 388 starfruit seeds ready to go for summer. I was so happy with that. Is that enough though? to make 10 million gold by the end of the year. At that time, I thought it was. Maybe it is, we'll find out. So the great thing about strawberries is that you don't have to re the ground when you transition from spring to summer. You just have to side the way all the dead strawberry seeds and you can just plant the star fruits then in their place, no problem at all. Obviously, if you could, can't unlock the desert, you know, by the time you get to summer, melons would be the way to go. So I cut down more trees today, needed tons more wood, so important. And fibre of course. I got access to the bad house area here, so I got all the fibre up here that the area had to offer. And I also cut down every single tree up here in the bad house area. 
This is also a great area to make tree farms, actually, because not a whole lot of NPCs come up here, you know? I also went back down to Sinusap Forest, cleared out all the trees around the forest, and day 32, we're going into the Skull Cavern. So I got a huge cluster of gold ores here. I'll show things like this because it's pretty cool when you get big clusters like this. Gold ore is always welcome, of course. It means I can make more sprinklers, and I was going to need hundreds of sprinklers, you know, for the amount of things that I'm going to end up growing in this challenge. Scott Caverns can be a dangerous place, which is why you should always come down here with plenty of healables. Those Iridium bats are nasty things. Even if you have level 10 combat and loads of HP, those bats will take huge chunks of your HP away. The serpents are dangerous, but not as half as dangerous as the Iridium bats. Those things are super dangerous. Day 33, I used up all of the minerals that I had collected in the Scott Cavern to purchase more power-ups from the Desert Trader. Triple Shot Expressos, Spicy Eels were always top priority, and I had a couple of bombs as well. I got an Iridium Sprinkler from the treasure chest, I was super happy with that. That's probably one of the best things I can ask for. Extra Prismatic Shards are welcome if I get three of those. On Thursdays I can trade them in for the Magic Rock Candy, and that will make a Skull Cavern run very lucrative indeed. So it was getting late. I decided to stop looking for ladders and holes, focused more on getting Iridium ores. I finally got level 10 mining, took the blacksmith perk, 50% more money for selling bars. And that's not just Iridium bars, copper bars, iron bars, gold bars. The copper bars and iron bars don't sell for a whole lot, but the gold bars can be decent enough, especially if you have loads of them and you don't need them. I also fished up another legendary fish today, I got the crimson fish here. Doesn't sell for half as much as the legend, but it is worth a few thousand. So it's definitely worth catching. 91,000 gold today, primarily from Iridium Bars. 1,500 gold per bar with the blacksmith perk, so worth it. That's why Skull Cavern is so important, especially early on. If you can get into it early, just keep tapping away at it. Eventually, you're going to get tons of money. I made 50 kegs today. The challenge now was to accumulate enough materials to make another 50 kegs when those tappers are ready in a few days. So, huge amount of trees were going to be needed. I also got Robin to make a shed here to store the cakes in, because I didn't want to place them all over the place. Not at the moment, anyway, you know? I wanted to keep things tidy. So, we're going to upgrade the pickaxe today. We're going to go with the gold pickaxe. Eventually, we'll max out the tools. Um, but I decided to go with the gold pickaxe because I needed my axe to cut down trees to get wood. So, we're back in Cinderstep Forest. Any sort of trees that I see just get cut down straight away. Back to Morris too, because I have lots of money. This time, we are going to go with the minecarts, because I wanted to get the fast travel. So, floor 81 in the mines is hands down the best place you can go to farm fibre. And I spend days here farming fibre in this challenge. I, I spend many, many days coming down here farming fibre. And there's loads of reasons for it. The first reason, of course is that I need to make more tea saplings. Tea saplings are great for huge bursts of money. The tons of fibre for that. Went to the desert too. More trees in the desert. Cut down all the trees in the desert. But I didn't stop there. I made a huge giant tree farm in the desert. I also made tree fertiliser. I need fibre for tree fertiliser. So fibre is super important. I got my gold pickaxe back off Clint. The next thing I did was go to Robin to upgrade the shed from a regular shed to a big shed and the reason for this is that I could just simply put more cakes inside it because by the time it comes to the end of this challenge we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of cakes. <laughs> Rainy day it was back to fishing but I decided to fish down in the beach area because it was summer and the beach area is more profitable than the lake area in summer. Got some battery packs too, I'm going to keep those for iridium sprinklers later on. So I got this, believe it or not, on floor 17. Look at all the iridium. I mean, it's just so rare to get huge clusters of it like that, especially on the earlier floors. I also got two prismatic shards from it as well, so super lucky. 32 iridium ores. I also got the dark cowboy hat, and I decided to put that on just to kind of change my appearance up a bit, make myself look a bit more interesting. <laughs> so I was running around Skull Cavern in style. How many hats could I collect on this challenge? I already had the dark one. Maybe I'll get looking at the red one eventually and the blue one. So look at this, day number 39. Look at all these lovely summer forgeables. Great thing about summer forgeables, you only need three summer forgeables to make summer wild seeds. So we're probably going to end up with 
thousands of summer wild seeds by the time we're finished with this. All of these forgeables will be converted into wild seeds. There's 640 right there. And this is just the start of it. I spend the whole day hoeing up the ground, putting down iridium sprinklers, and planting more summer wild seeds. And by the time we're finished with summer, we're going to have thousands of these things. We're going to, have, we're going to make so many tea saplings, it's going to make the barista challenge look like a cakewalk. <laughs> The time and energy used to plant all these seeds is going to be worth it in the end because these saplings sell for 500 gold apiece and I'm going to end up making thousands of these saplings so if I want to make 10 million gold I need to use every money making tip and trick in the book. We all know about starfruit wine, we're also using the iridium bars, we're using the tea saplings, we're using everything at our disposal to make as much money as possible. I needed access to the Statue of Uncertainty to change up my professions to maximise profit. So I gave Clint all my lovely geodes to process and then we're going to give all these into Gunther, including the super lucky prismatic shard that I just got there as well. So the more artefacts I give into Gunther, the closer I get to getting access to the sores so I can access the statue to switch up my professions whenever I need to. Of course I went back down to floor 81, spent the rest of the day farming up fibre on day 40 here so I can make more tea saplings, so I can make more tree fertilizers. Gunther visited me the next day, he gave me the key to the sores, which was super handy. I can now go down and use the statue, swap up professions on the go. I also got more batteries here, that means I can make more iridium sprinklers, if I so wished. So all the trees grew in the desert. I spent most of the day cutting down every single one of these trees, because I needed tons of wood to make more kegs. The tappers were going to be ready again very soon, so I needed thousands of wood to make a lot more kicks. Thanks to the Skull Cavern runs, I had all the copper and iron I needed. Priority here was just primarily wood. Thousands and thousands of wood needed every few days to keep up with the cake production so I could process all of the crops before day 100 to get that lovely 10 million gold. I gave my character a little break by the end of day 41, then decided there was more to do, so we went back to Stardew Valley and I started putting the kegs down in the big shed to get them ready for the first starfruit process. So these kegs hadn't processed anything yet. The first batch of starfruits were going to go into this shed and I had enough kegs to, I'd say, fill up 75% of the big shed. Day 42, the first starfruit harvest begun. This was going to get me straight up to level 10 farming. And when you get level 10 farming, I can choose between Agriculturist or Artisan. Once all of the starfruits were harvested, I went straight into the big shed and I filled up the kegs as quickly as possible. So each of these starfruits will turn into a starfruit wine. Now it does take a good 6 days for the conversion to happen, but it is going to be so worth it. The profit that you make from the starfruit wine is crazy. Huge profits. Not as good as ancient fruit, but it's definitely a top tier fruit. Halfway through summer, I buy more starfruit seeds. 541 starfruit seeds, thank you very much. I'm going to plant all of those. I also had to hoe more of the ground up to make room for more starfruit seeds. That took the majority of the day because I had to water those as well. But that will pay off eventually when I get to sell the wine. So I'm going to pick agriculturist. All crops grow 10% faster. I can very easily switch back into artisan when I decide to sell all the wine. For now, the wine can just accumulate. And it's only the 15th of summer, so it's not like I need money anytime soon. I already had the starfruits planted on the farm. In the Skull Cavern here now, day 43, we're getting lots of ores, gold, copper, iron, iridium. We're also getting diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and this everything we need to make a good profit. Day 44, more battery packs for us. That means more iridium sprinklers. I also had tons of iridium ores to process into iridium bars. Most of it will be sold, some of it will be kept for iridium sprinklers as you only need one iridium bar along with some other basic stuff such as a gold bar and a battery pack to make an iridium sprinkler. Caught the mutant car, get a few grand for that, spent a good bit of day fishing too and I also got more hats down in the skull cavern. That was the blue hat which was great so now I had the dark cowboy hat, I had the red cowboy hat and the blue cowboy hat. What else are we going to get? Level 10 combat, very nice. What would brood, 15% more damage. And of course, we're going to process all our lovely iridium ores back into iridium bars to make even more money. What do we do with all the money? Why, get another upgrade of course, this time the bridge upgrade. This means I get access to quarry. 
I got a magic rock candy today because it was Thursday and I had the prismatic shards to do so. More fishing today. The more fish I got, the better. Any extra stuff in the fishing treasure chests was also a bonus. Look at all the money I made today. Most of the money came from Iridium Bars, but we made a decent bit from the fishing as well. Day 47 and look at this. What you're seeing here is just a thing of beauty. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I needed sprinklers for the very top, so I had to water those manually for the next three days. But the rest of it was done. And with all these summer forageables, I was going to be able to make thousands, thousands of summer wild seeds, which means thousands of tea saplings. So I made two full stacks, almost two full stacks of summer wild seeds, one full stack plus 581. But why stop there? If I wanted to make 10 million gold, I had to think big. I had to use everything this game gave me. Use up all the land, all the farm. So I refilled the patch with more summer wild seeds, but I also made an extra patch, which took me the rest of the day, and planted more summer wild seeds. What I was going to get back from this was going to be thousands and thousands of summer wild seeds, and probably a max out foraging skill. So it was time to get the greenhouse update this time and I was going to fill up the greenhouse more, more than likely with starfruit. I also got level 10 foraging, go with the botanist. The botanist makes it really useful when you're picking up hundreds or thousands of forageables because draw the iridium quality they stack up quite nicely for you. The first batch of starfruits were done. So I'm going to get all the lovely starfruit wine. I'm not going to sell it though because I do not have the artisan profession. Instead I'm just going to store it away and I'll sell it eventually once I respec into artisan, but for now we were sticking with agriculturists, we were sticking with the 10% increased growth rate for the crops. I also put some cakes outside, and I decided to go into the quarry cave today, fought my way to the haunted skulls, there's actually a 0.1% chance those haunted skulls can drop magic rock candies. It's super rare, but it is worth coming in here on most days, farming those skulls, because you never know. So I purchased more starfruit seeds, just enough to fill up a greenhouse. So I got those off Sandy, planted those in my greenhouse along with six iridium sprinklers that was going to be another nice money maker for me i got rid of all the breeze and trees inside the quarry it was time to use the space here for the tree farm what were we going to do with all these trees it's a surprise you'll probably find out in a couple of days <laughs> but we weren't going to cut down these trees we had a use for these we were however going to cut down all the trees that we were going to plant here in the desert hundreds of trees planted down here so I used the remaining of my tree fertilizer so that these trees would grow super fast. I also went back to the quarry too in day 50 and I put down a path here. This makes it super easy to manage all these trees in the future because debris wouldn't grow and it wouldn't stop me from collecting things efficiently. So this path was going to save me tons of time. I also went to Pierre and I bought wheat. Great thing about wheat, it survives through summer into fall. So wheat was going to be used as a huge placeholder, which means I didn't have to rehold the ground and fall. That was the tactic I was using with the wheat. Plus, I would make a little profit as well. So back down to floor 81, we're farming more fiber. Why are we farming fiber? Because I need more tree fertilizer and I need to make more tea saplings. Fiber, super important. It's all about fiber and wood when it comes to this challenge. Definitely the two most important resources, fiber and wood. The next day it was a skull cavern run, main reason I needed more regular materials for kegs such as copper and iron. I also wanted gold as well, you know if I wanted to make regular quality sprinklers. And if I got some iridium it was a bonus, I could just sell the iridium bars to make even more money. I did need 10 million gold after all. Look at all these forgeables. This is just a thing of beauty, I was going to harvest all these, now we were on the 25th of summer so I couldn't plant these back down in the ground again. So I just picked them all up, turned all these back into summer wild seeds, and I'm also going to put the wheat that I purchased down here as well, so I wouldn't have to re all this when we got to fall. So this was going to save me an absolute ton of time come fall. If I had more resources, I would have made more cakes, I could have converted the wheat into beer, but I didn't and I had to prioritise the star fruit. So more trees have regrown in the sap forests, of course we cut them all down. <laughs> and we get more oak resins today, 50 more oak resins, that means 50 more kegs I can create. Also, the last of the summer forageables have grown, so I'm going to pick up all these forageables, I'm going to put down wheat, and I'm going to turn all those forageables back into summer wild seeds. 
I also went to the mines just to convert the usual iridium ores into iridium bars. And we're also going back into the desert to cut down all of these trees that have regrown because I needed thousands of wood to make more kegs. That's 50 more kegs ready to go. This challenge was going to come down to processing power. The more I can process, the more money I make, the more millions I can make. I'm going to put these kegs inside the greenhouse for now. And I go back inside the big shed as well that night. And I just end up getting more starfruit wine. Filling the kegs back up with regular starfruit. So I can make even more money. Am I going to sell the starfruit wine? Not at the moment. Because we have to remember, we still don't have the artisan profession. Up until now, of course. It's time to respec. We're going with artisan now. Which means 40% more for the wine. I also reselected foraging. So I went with forester and lumberjack. So I could get more wood. So day 27. Look at all our lovely starfruits. This was the last batch of starfruits. We're going to harvest all these. And look how much I made today. Seven, almost 800,000 gold. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it's a small amount. But it was a start in the right direction. I'm making another small tree farm down here. But I'm just going to put tappers on these trees. So I can get more oak resin. So I can increase my keg output which means i can increase my processing power back to the desert of course we're cutting down more trees we need more wood so we can make more eggs <laughs> i sound like a broken record player at this rate so it's the first day of fall we're going to visit pierre and we're going to purchase thousands yes you heard me right thousands of pumpkins there's the first full stack of pumpkins and here's the second full stack of pumpkins that's almost two thousand pumpkins right there will that be enough will that allow us to make 10 million We'll know soon enough. I might as well get the last upgrade here so I can go over to Ginger Island. So I just got the panning upgrade. Will I use the pan? No. Go to Pox's channel if you want to see people use pans. <laughs> we'll stick to the skull caverns. So I got rid of all this wheat. Now I'm just going to sell the wheat and the hay. Because I just didn't have the cakes to process that wheat into beer. Even though the profit margins were great. I had to prioritise the star fruits. I made... Over 200,000 gold today from selling tea saplings. Look at all that lovely money. I also got access to special artist quests. I took Robin's resource rush. She wanted a thousand pieces of stone. Why not? We get to keep the stone for ourselves. And we needed stone anyway. So, into the greenhouse today. Day number 59. And look at all this lovely star fruit. We're going to harvest all this star fruit. And to replace it, I put down pumpkin seeds. Because I had spare. I had lots of spares. So, the wheat on the main patch was ready. Day 59, this was the third of fall. I'm going to scythe away all this and replace it with pumpkin seeds. This was going to take me the whole day to do, but it will be worth it because when all these pumpkins fully grow, I was going to make tons of money through processing. The bottom patch was also finished, so I scythed away all the hay down here as well. I had nice iridium sprinklers set up, and it was going to be more pumpkin seeds down here. That night, back into the big shed, more starfruit wine was ready. It's amazing how quickly the six days comes around, especially when you're grinding intensely every single day. 441,000 gold there for selling the wine. I also got a surprise party here from Morris & Co. Thanks so much, Morris. They would award me with a nice Georgia machine, free Georgia Cola every day for me. I also got Robin to upgrade another shed to a big shed so I could put in more cakes. I also started a farrier up in the bathhouse area so I could get more wood later on because wood, as you know, is needed every couple of days to keep up with the kegs. Back down to floor 81 in the mines to get fibre, also to get stone as well, but primarily just to get fibre. Main reason this time wasn't for tea saplings, but it was for tree fertiliser because wood was just way more important. Time for the respec. Back to agriculturist, all crops grow 10% faster. So because I had that perk now active, I wasn't going to be selling anything anytime soon. I would just accumulate all of the wines that I got. I also had over 1 million gold, so I didn't need to sell anything anyway. So the boat to Ginger Island was fixed, but before I went, I decided to make sure everything was squared up on the farm. Before I went over to Ginger Island to claim all the resources it had. Now I'm not going to show much of the golden walnut connections on this. I'm just going to show the highlights. So I got some golden walnuts. I fixed up the farmhouse. Which means I could access the ginger island farm. What I was going to do with this farm. We'll find out soon. <laughs> but I ended up using all of the farm space here. So I can make some huge profits. 
went into the volcano dungeon to see if I could pick up some power-ups. This is a great place for stone, coal and other resources. I also got a deluxe pirate hat out of the chest, I was super happy with that. And I made it to the top of the volcano so I got a free prismatic shard. The next day I went to Clint, it was time to get a tool upgrade. This time we're going to upgrade the axe to an iridium axe. Also back to floor 81 in the mines to get, you guessed it, more fibre. <laughs> It was time for another special artist quest. We're going to go with Robin's project, 80 hardwood for Robin. No problem at all. And it was time to fish up the legendary anglerfish. This is one of the easier legendary fishes, but it will sell for a few thousand gold, so why not? Got some super cucumbers as well. The big shed was ready. More starfruit wine for us. This will accumulate into the hundreds. I wonder if we will make 10 million gold by the end of this challenge. It's going to be a close one. <laughs> Back to Clint, day 66, I got my lovely Iridium Axe. I could basically two-shot trees now with this. And I got him to upgrade my pickaxe to an Iridium Pickaxe, so I could be more efficient in future Scott Cavern runs. All of the trees in the bathhouse area have fully grown. Cut down all these trees for the wood so I can make more kegs, of course. So I was a good portion of the day cutting down trees. This challenge, primarily, is just getting fibre, cutting down trees and making kegs. You know, that's what you do if you want to make huge amounts of money. Try to accumulate as much wood as possible and just make sure you have as many crops as possible on your farm and as many cakes as possible. Into the secret woods of course, gonna get all this lovely hardwood for Robin. Any slimes to get in my way get a swift death. So look at the quarry now. What are we gonna do with all this maple syrup? We are gonna make bee houses and those bee houses are gonna produce fairy rose honey. I'm gonna show you in the next few days a giant fairy rose honey farm. I got my Iridium pickaxe back off Clint. I also bought some fairy seeds off Pierre because we need these to make fairy rose honey. And the ginger island farm was going to be a fairy rose honey farm. Great thing about ginger island, regardless of the season, the fairy roses will be okay on ginger island, which means I can get fairy rose honey every few days for eternity. But because it was a 100 day challenge, I needed to put those bee houses down as quickly as possible. So my new oak resin farm was ready to go, got those oak resins. I also went into the greenhouse and got some starfruit wine inside here as well. So as you can see, it's all starting to come together. I put down some kegs here too in the quarry because I had so many kegs now I was running out of space. Needed to find other places to put them. Quarry is a great place to put down kegs. I also put down some flooring too so debris wouldn't damage my kegs. Look at all my pumpkins. I have so many pumpkins. I even got lucky I got a few mutated pumpkins. The giant pumpkins would give me a lot of crops. So I harvested all the pumpkins today. This was going to take me the majority of the day because there was so many pumpkins. There was thousands of pumpkins to harvest. I also had to process all these into pumpkin juice using cakes. Now they're not as profitable as starfruit, but we were in fall, not summer, so pumpkins are the next best thing you can get your hands on when it comes to processing stuff in fall. It was time for another special orders quest, so we're going to go with rock rejuvenation here just to get some more money because we had tons of minerals anyway from the Skull Cavern runs. I also did the quest to get access to the magic ink so I could use the wizard's terminal to hopefully make the golden clock later on. So I got all the fibre that was down in the mutant bug layer and I picked up the dark talisman. It was back to the regular mines and we were processing bars. Iron bars of course for kegs and copper bars. Also went to the desert as well, cut down more trees so I can make more cakes. It's all about the cakes. So once all these trees were cut down, it was all about putting down the seeds again to make more tree farms. It's all about keeping the tree farms active so you can get more wood. Day 72, look at all our beautiful pumpkins. It's just a thing of beauty, looking at all these lovely pumpkins. Got a few giant crops as well, which was really nice. I also got second place in the Stardew Valley Fair, 500 star tokens. We gambled all those on green until I had enough star tokens to get a star drop. Now, I actually wasn't going to come to the fair at all. I was going to spend a day cutting down trees, but I decided that the maximum energy was in fact worth my time. So, the next day, made more kegs, put them down in the shed here, just to fill up the shed. More processing power for us more production of starfruit wine. This time, we were onto pumpkins. Oh, I also picked up the magical ink too, just so I could access to the wizard's terminal so I can make the golden clock in the future. Speaking of the golden clock, let's take a look. 10 million gold for the gold clock. 
prevents debris from appearing on your farm, keeps fences from the gain. Is that perk worth 10 million gold? Absolutely not. But it is quite the flex to say that you can get a gold clock within 100 days of playing this game, especially when you start from scratch. Day 74, we are getting more oak resins. That means, of course, more cakes for us. We are going to need thousands of cakes because we had thousands of crops. I put more cakes out here, where the bus area is. This is a real nice place to put processing machines because it's right next to your farm. The kegs up in the quarry were also ready, so I got all of the star fruit wine from these and replaced them with pumpkins. I thousands of pumpkins I had to get through. You know the drill by now, we had to get more fibre to make more tree fertiliser and any excess, we could make some more sneaky tea saplings and sell those for bursts of money if we needed them. So I was finished with the maple syrups, I was happy with the amount of bee houses that I made, so I got rid of the tappers, cut down all these trees for extra wood. The great thing about putting down the path was that I could just put down more seeds here, make another tree farm, and they would be protected from debris, making future tree farms super easy to make. Look at all the tea saplings I'm going to make right now. 560 tea saplings. This primarily came from days of cutting down trees and farming fibre on floor 81. 280,000 gold I was going to get from that. Back over to Ginger Island and I was going to cut down every single tree this island had to offer. No tree was safe from my axe. If I saw a tree, it got cut down. Simple as. I wasn't super interested in the key secret walnut room or any of the quests. I just wanted access to the trees and the farm to grow more stuff to make more money on Ginger Island for this challenge. So it was more processing today, day 77, we're almost there now with this challenge. I had 1.4 million gold, I wasn't really spending that because I didn't really need to. I had tons of pumpkins planted on the farm. It was just a matter of how fast we can process everything that we have now at this stage. So kegs were priority one, which means wood, copper ore and iron ore were materials that I needed constantly. If I got low on copper and iron, it was off to the Skull Cavern. If I needed to make more tree farms for wood, it was floor 81 farm and fibre. Speaking of Skull Cavern, back down we go to get more materials. Any materials that I got were used. Gold, copper, iron, stone were all put to use. Raw, all super important materials, of course. The more iridium ore we got, the better, of course. We could sell the iridium bars, get more money. Prismatic shards were a bonus as well. Day 79, and look at us go. We've got kegs all over the place now. Processing pumpkins into pumpkin juice. I took a fragment of the past special artist quest here. This quest becomes trivial when you can access Ginger Island because the dig site here has tons of bone fragments on it. And you, you get almost a hundred bone fragments from blowing open all these nodes. It's very close to completing the quest here, but I was short a few. I also got the hot java ring inside the volcano. I was super excited for this. This means that when I slay monsters, they would drop either a coffee or a triple shot espresso drink. It's probably one of the most overpowered rings in the game, in my opinion. So I needed a few more bone fragments. I just went down here into the 70s, killed some skeletons to complete that quest. That was another few thousand gold in the bag for me. So I deposited that inside Gunther's place for some handy money. So you said a trowman here into the box, a hundred bone fragments, thank you very much. And the reward, of course, was 3,500 gold. In the grand scheme of things, a small amount of money, but I would take any money given to me at this stage to beat the challenge for 10 million gold. Day 80, back to Cindersap Forest. Some trees have regrown, cut those down straight away. Day 81, look at all our lovely pumpkins. We even got a lot of giant pumpkins this time, which was really good. I was thinking about leaving the pumpkins there because they would look really cool in winter, but I decided not to get rid of all the pumpkins because I needed every single crop I'd get my hands on for money. 10 million gold. More trees have resurfaced in the quarry, cut down all those trees, planted more seeds, the cycle continues, a new tree farm, rinse and repeat, just keep the wood production up, which means we can keep the cake production up. Look at all the honey over here in Ginger Island. Tons of fairy rose honey. Each fairy rose honey combined with the artisan perk sells for I think 680 gold. That is crazy. So 680 gold for each of these honeys. That was going to amass to a huge profit. 
absolutely huge. So I was going to respect back to Artisan soon to sell all this stuff, but I kept up with the agriculturist for now because I didn't need to sell stuff straight away. I also have to bear in mind that the next season is winter, can't grow any crops in winter, so there was no rush respecting anyway. On Ginger Island, I was cutting on the rest of the trees. This was the last batch of pumpkins. It's 27th of fall, day 83. Loads of pumpkins here, even if you giant pumpkins. I was so happy with this. Harvested all these lovely pumpkins. Broke open the giant pumpkin. It's so satisfying actually to hit those giant crops with an axe. I put more kegs over here. And I eventually put down more kegs here because no NPCs go there. And I also end up using the tunnel later on as well. Back to Ginger Island, more trees have resurfaced. Cut down all the trees, of course. Any coconuts or things like that that drop, I just sell those in the shipping bin. I did another volcano dungeon run. I got the Soul Sapper Ring. Not great for in-game at all, you know, because when you get to the end-game, energy just isn't the problem. Day 85, it's the first of winter. The sprinklers were now useless, so I just pickaxed up all the sprinklers. I'm just going to sell these for money, because it's just extra money for me. It was also Krobs' birthday today. I found him running around the bushes. He gave me a magnifying glass. Thank you very much, Krobus. I can now pick up those secret letters off the ground. More star fruits inside the greenhouse. Going to collect all the star fruits, convert those into star fruit wines. I also had to bear in mind that I only had 16 days in winter. So I had to really watch how long something took the process. Because the star fruit took six days. I respect back to Artisan because I wanted to start preparing myself to sell all of these Artisan goods. 40% is just too good to pass up. Back to Ginger Island, look at all the lovely honey that I was going to get. Fairy Rose honey galore. Got Robin to make another shed of course. Just put another big shed down there because I had more kegs coming up. I put more kegs down here, just outside of the tunnel. Look at all the kegs I had now. I also went inside the tunnel and I had a few more kegs placed inside here. And any more kegs I got in the future we're going to go into the shed. Any excess we'll just go inside the tunnel. Back to the mines. We are processing iridium ores into iridium bars. Each iridium bar has for 1500 gold. So it's definitely worth it. And of course back to floor 81 to farm more fibre. And you can probably guess by now the reason we need more fibre. is because we need more tree fertilizers. And I also wanted to make more tea saplings if I needed extra money to make the 10 million gold. Back to Robin, and this time it was to get the big shed upgrade. So we definitely got that. Now, bear in mind it was 550 wood for a big shed upgrade. That's a lot of wood. But I decided to go with it because the sheds were handy for storage space. I filled the sheds up with kegs. The challenge here now was trying to process all of the pumpkins before the 16th. I still had a lot of pumpkins after process. I also went to Ginger Island too, I got more honey. So for the most part, winter is basically just me running around, processing things, collecting things. I just cut down a few trees if they pop up so I can get more wood to make more cakes. I was looking for more fibre as well, so I decided to try out the mutant bug layer. There actually wasn't a whole lot of fibre down here, which was unfortunate. But I did get some coffees from killing the enemies down here, so it wasn't that bad. Back to floor 81, more fibre, more tree fertilisers, more tea saplings, the usual story. <laughs> this is what a 10 million challenge looks like. It is a serious fibre and wood grind. Serious grind. Actually, I had to sleep that night dreaming about trees. I decided not to sell bits and pieces until the very end. I was going to sell everything in a huge bulk at the end just to see how much money that we actually accumulate all at once. So, day 91, we were closing in on the challenge completion date. And it was more processing. We had accumulated tons of kegs. More trees have grown in the quarry. The great thing about tree fertilizer is that winter will not stop it from activating. Trees will still grow in winter if used with tree fertilizer. I was going to make more kegs using this wood because I still had a good few days before the 16th to process more crops into wine. I just wasn't too sure at this time if I was going to get through all of the pumpkins that I had accumulated because there was a lot of pumpkins there to get through. And each keg, it took almost four days to process one pumpkin into a pumpkin juice and it took six days to process a star fruit into a star fruit wine, which is why it's so important to get hundreds of kegs. So I decided to take a break from the grinding and I did the fishing event here, one of few things. I mean obviously I could have done a Skull Cavern run or something, you know, better with my time, but I actually needed a break. I felt like my character needed a break as well. But after the event, <laughs> it was back to floor 81 to grind more fibre. 
I mean, if I was reincarnated as floor 81, I'd be so thankful right now that I had a visitor every couple of days, you know? So, look at all the fiber and wood that I had accumulated. Let's see how many tea saplings I can make. Boom, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. 925 tea saplings. Thanks to all the tree farms that we grown, all of the times we visited for 81 to get the fiber that it had. Back to Ginger Island, day 94, to get more fairy rose honey. We were now closing in on the end of our challenge. It's very exciting at this stage in the game to see if you're going to beat the challenge or not. At this stage, I didn't know if I was going to beat the challenge or not because I hadn't sold anything yet. Everything was just accumulating inside a chest. All of these pumpkin juices were just going into a chest. All of the starfruit wines were going into a chest. The honey was going into a chest. The iridium bars were going into a chest. Now, obviously, my money has gradually increased every few days, but that's just selling other bits and bobs that I wasn't really accumulating. Scott Cavanaugh, look what I get an auto petter. Unfortunately, I didn't get an auto petter when I did my chicken farmer challenge, <laughs> but it can be an auto petter for this challenge because the game knows that I didn't have any animals on the farm. So, if you watch there closely, I actually got my first rabbit's foot off a serpent. It is a super rare drop, but it's nice to get. What was I going to do with that rabbit's foot? I was going to sell it, of course. I wasn't going to give it to any of the villagers. <laughs> I needed all the money I could get. So I was finished with the greenhouse, in terms of this challenge anyway. So I got my pickaxe, picked up all of the iridium sprinklers, just going to sell all these, because every little bit counts. I also processed the rest of my iridium ores into bars to sell as well. Day 97. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make 10 million gold within 100 days? Is it even possible to have 10 million gold on hand within the first 100 days of this game? We're going to find out very soon. I've been wanting to do this challenge for quite some time. The reason why I decided to do it now is because I felt like I had accumulated enough experience from playing this game a lot to attempt a min-max challenge like this. Also bear in mind that many day resets were done. There were many a day where I didn't do Grayskull Cavern runs, so I reset the day redid the Skull Cavern until I was happy with the results. Despite the fact that there were super lucky days, sometimes you can get super lucky days and you could do horrendously bad in Skull Cavern, it just doesn't give you the holes that you need. So this challenge took me weeks to make. Weeks. So day 99, the second last day, I was finishing up here in the mines, just getting the last of the Iridium Bars. These are all the goods we're going to sell. Honey, wines, tea saplings, other bits and bobs, regular wood, regular stone, and 665 pumpkins that I didn't get the process because I didn't have enough cakes. Let's go to sleep and see if we beat the challenge. We've 1.7 million gold at the moment. We made a total of 7.6 million gold. Did we get the 10 million gold? Can we purchase the gold clock within 100 days? Let's press OK and find out. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. I had 9.3 million gold. I needed 10 million to get the gold clock. I did make over 10 million gold, but I didn't have it on hand, which means I failed the challenge. Is it possible to make 10 million gold and to purchase the gold clock within 100 days? It is. There are things I could have done. There are things I could have adjusted to get more money. I could have, for example, put the bee houses somewhere else on Ginger Island and use the actual farmland to make more starfruit and convert those into starfruit wine. If I'd done that, I'm pretty sure I would have completed the challenge. Despite the fact that I failed, I still had a great time doing this run and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was a very grindy video, but the point I wanted to make was that if you have the knowledge and if you get the luck, you can make millions of gold in this game very early so i'm going to leave the video there i really hope you enjoyed this one as per usual the next stardew valley video will be uploaded within the next few days for you to enjoy this video required many weeks to make so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet hit that subscribe button and help my channel grow i would greatly appreciate it i hope you have a great new year and i hope you have a great week a nice cozy week and i will see you in the next video bye for now